Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to yet another Downshift Racing Recap. I want to say that we're in week 10 or 11 already. It's been going by so quickly here and this week, I want to say straight away, it was a very challenging week. All three races that we had were very unique in their own way. Very interesting car choices, very interesting setups, just everything about this week was really separating the boys from the men. And starting out, we have my spec race for Tuesday. This is the Aston Martin V12 Vantage GT3 on Mount Panorama. And this one, Mount Panorama is a very unique course. And originally, I just absolutely hated it until I did one of the master super license where you're driving one of the newer Honda Civic Type R's around it. And it was that middle sector where you're at the top of the hill and you're starting to make your way down and it's all these very close chicanes and you have absolutely zero margin of error. Because I finally was able to gold medal it, have I started to appreciate this track for its absolute razor edge technicality about it, where it's you have to get it right perfectly each and every lap. So it's just one of those perfect combinations of a very tight technical circuit where the weather is able to put a little bit of wetness down on the track. We have a heavy understeery yet oversteery car at the same time, and it was just a recipe for are you a good driver or are you a great driver in each and every lap as we go through there are s some absolutely crazy moments through every one of them lap two at the top of turn two i have a little bit of an issue where i you know just lose it up on the inside and collect up into the wall and get a little bit of penalty so we're getting towards the end of lap three. I've made a pass on Magnum to get up into seventh place on the back straight. I'm coming up close to Shio and Junior, and I'm seeing them going side by side on the back straight. I'm seeing if I can stay close to Junior, maybe make a pass on Shio, but the tarmac just runs out. There's just not enough time to make it. So I fall back in line. Junior goes a little bit wide. I too go a little bit wide and suddenly they break because Shio is letting Junior back on. I hit the brakes late, upset the car, spin out onto the wall, and I am just really struggling at this point because now I'm trying to get the car back on the track. And originally, I had felt like this was going to be a very great race. I was practicing this track. I felt comfortable with the car. I knew that, you know, being careful with the throttle input, I could really make up some time. And then here we are in lap three. I'm not even in last place, but I am so far down the order. Lap five, I'm finally catching up to the pack. I make a pass on Magnum and we're going down the back straight and deja vu. I've got Junior trying to go around the outside of Shio down the back straight. And in my mind, I've got some flashbacks of what happened just two laps ago going, I'm somehow back up the pack and yet I see something happening where this isn't going to work out well. So after Paven settles his penalties, we're in the order of Junior, Shio, myself, and Paven. We go around the final corner, and Junior goes wide, hits the wall. I'm going too wide with Shio. I'm on the inside. Paven very sneakily comes up on the outside as well. And we're going down the, on the front straight, and I'm going to make sure that I'm going to get this pass to work. I'm going to sit up on the inside and the car understeers into Paven. Ugh. And not only that, it pushes him out into the dirt. And when he puts on the power, he spins out. And I'm kicking myself bad. Because at this point, my poor driving of not being able to get this car under control is no longer affecting just myself, it's affecting other people. And then as we're seeing here, and then I have another incident up at turn two, and thankfully Magnum is able to straighten me out and I grab a penalty and it's just, it's not going well. I serve my penalty and lap seven, I'm starting to, you know, catch back up to the pack yet again. 
and Paven is on a rampage. He is absolutely, understandably upset at the situation. He's coming up quick. And then we reach to this part. I don't know what it is about that boost back there, but you guys are eating it. Oh, <laughs> baby, it's just quest me. Get him out of my way. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, baby, no, shoved me into the wall. Isn't... I'm fine with it. <laughs> oh, He's like, I'm not Did dealing I... with this again. <laughs> oh, oh. Ah, oh, oh, no, oh. No, no. Oh, my God. <laughs> Magnum and myself at the end of lap seven make out of that accident mostly unscathed, and we're going down the front straight. I am once again looking to make my move. I'm on the inside, then Magnum's on the outside, and once again, the same thing happens with Paven. My car understeers into Magnum. Thankfully, Magnum was able to catch it before he hits the grass, but of course, naturally, Paven had already made up some quite a bit of time. So he's sitting back, sees the same thing happening. He's calling me out going, Wesby, what the hell, man? And I am just uh, not having a good race. At this point, I am chasing down Shio somehow, some way with all these incidents and accidents and everything that's happening. I am chasing down fourth. And if you look at the gaps here, and if you look at the map, Gotta Go is just out in front all by his lonesome self. And the rest of the pack is actually pretty close, so I'm actually making up some very good time. I'm able to get so close to Shio, and we're on the back straight, and I'm not alone because Paven, again, making up some great time, is coming up behind me and makes a good pass. We get down to the bottom chicane. He makes a great pass on the inside of Shio. As Shio goes around the next corner, he puts down power a little bit too soon, has a little bit of a wiggle, and then we get down to the last corner. I am looking for my opportunities once again. We're going down the main straight. We're drag racing. I am now on the outside versus on the inside. And I'm sitting there going, okay, so let's see if we can make this work. Shio makes an incredible move leaves lots of space just makes it happen and i'm just like wow that's how you do it what a great move by shio there so i'm feeling much more confident i'm feeling a little bit more like myself i'm going through the top of the hill knowing it like the back of my hand and then we're getting to this moment where we're understanding that with the weather it's made the track a little bit greasy the tires have been worn down and greased the track up more and in a moment of complete forgetfulness, I put down the power a little bit too soon, and I spin out right before the back straight. No! Ah! What was that? Oh. Ah. I was so close. <sighs> so at the very end, I finished a very lonesome seventh place. Yes, it's not last. Toshio, unfortunately, had a mistake just at the top of the mountain before we get into the tight technical stuff, and I was able to make up a place there. And it just... I want to remember this race because it was a really cool race in theory. Great car, great track. All the settings were there, and it just didn't click. Thankfully, I didn't have a whole lot of uh, time to spend to think about how bad a race that was because less than two days later, we are now focusing on the inaugural multi-class endurance race. First race being on Daytona and in the team that I am part of, the Team Influencer Motorsport, if you will, as a couple of us are quote-unquote streamers or content creators on the internet. I've got Gotta Go Fast in Group 2, Paven in Group 1, Drew in Group 4, and myself in Group 3. We had uh, made the decision to see if we can, as closely as possible, stick to using just a single manufacturer for our team. So we chose uh, Nissan, as a lot of the cars were pretty competitive, and we're finding out in this crazy race that there's 
so much to think about here. It's thinking about where our position is on the track, making sure that other groups are going by, not being interrupted if you're in a group four or group three, trying to keep on the power if you're in group one and group two, trying to think about where your tires are at, where your fuel is at, and after much of the first lap's kind of chaos, it settled down, like, remarkably so. Where it was just really, for, in my mind, at least for my race, it was just yourself up against the clock, up against your tire wear, up against what fuel you had. There was a lot of time to think about when should I be pitting? When shouldn't I be pitting? Where is everybody else going? What is everybody else doing? So it's, it wasn't much of a race of actual straight raw pace. It was a race of more mental games. We're trying to think collectively as a team what we can do to maybe help each other out. But at the end of the day, when you're all running individual groups, you're really thinking more about your own race. So I'd run multiple different tunes of the Nissan GTR, the 2013 Nismo race car, the Group 3, mind you. And I had run enough tests, but I hadn't done anything when it came to fuel or to tire wear. And I'm just trying to play off the cup a little bit, listening to what other people are doing, trying to mimic where I can. And as per usual, I fall into this default set mode where I try to roll back the fuel, try to see if I can make it last as long as possible, and then maybe do less pits. But it was insanely detrimental, because if you take a look at these lap times, I'll actually say that the other Group 3 members, which were Ring and Flanders, I want to say the two of them were running anywhere between an average lap of a 140 to a 142, something like that. In my fastest lap, when I was on fuel mode 1, was about 142.9 or something like that. But because I was on medium tires and then I was on hard tires and I was trying to roll back the fuel mode, my average lap was like a 147, 148. It was in the high 140s. And this was a problem for a lot of different reasons. When you're on fuel mode 6, it really neuters the top end performance of your vehicle. So your top speed immediately is lowered by like 20 miles an hour, which in most cases isn't bad if you're running like a 200 mile an hour car. The problem is it's Daytona where the majority of the track is that top speed. So at this point is because I'm just trying my best to work on the fuel mode and then pitting loosely where some of these other people are pitting, it's, I'm realizing that it's, I'm on the wrong strategy. It's just not working. If, if I were on maybe soft tires and maybe switch the medium in the back to soft, yeah, they would have been a little bit more destroyed, but I don't think the tire wear was that detrimental that it would have completely shattered the soft tires. I think they would have still be still been pretty usable during the lifespan of the stints that I was doing. And then if I could stop defaulting to a fuel saving mode, if I could just do it at pretty much everybody else in all of these races, whether it be the Sunday races or these Thursday endurance races, very little are these other racers ever on a fuel saving mode. All of them if they are fuel saving, it's because they're able to tune their car to have less power than traditionally what would be stock, or they've just chosen a car that is more fuel economical, meaning that they've chosen a car that's got a smaller engine displacement, have got you know a, a certain turbo setup or something, where it just runs really well. The car that I've chosen just seemed to be very fuel hungry and it needed every bit of performance that it had and yet I would still be running in a lower fuel mode and it's just I needed at this point I need to just work on a better car selection or like I was stating before just really working on getting off of fuel mode 6 and just running the car to its highest limit and just going for it because I think I probably spent more time lost 
on the streets because I wasn't running as fast as I could. Versus if I needed to take maybe an extra pit stop, these pits weren't honestly that long. So it's just... Unfortunately, by the end of it, in my specific group, I finished probably about a lap, close to a lap down. It was about a minute down from second place. And it's just... And again, it was uh, challenging. So I think this race is a very good race as far as learning goes. The results weren't there. But when it came down to it, listening to what your teammates have to say about the car selection and figuring out the tunes, where the car that I was in, the Group 3, is not known for the top end speed, and it really showed. But with some of these next courses coming up, it's got pretty good handling. So I think we'll be fine there, but again, I might want to open up the options a little bit more to find something that may be a little bit more fuel economical. So group three is maybe up for a change. Group one sounded like it, according to Paven, it didn't go all that well. The speed just was not there. It was also pretty fuel hungry. The handling was just weird. It was a hard car to control. So unfortunately, he placed third out of three for that group. Group two was a different animal. It sounded like that the car that I was chosen for that, which was the Nissan GTR GT500 Group 2 car. That one, it seemed like it was a pretty strong car to begin with, and it showed that it absolutely blew the others out of the water, and we placed first in that group. And likewise, Group 4, uh, we also placed first as well, so it's just, I think those car decisions were good, and I think if we really focus on trying to find a solution for group one, whether we change out the car or we just kind of do it on a per track basis, figure out what's what's going on, if, if just adjusting the tune for each track is good enough, or we have to go completely off the deep end and choose a completely new car, we'll figure something out. And again, group three, same situation, whether we run the 2018 version versus the 2013, or if we just go a completely different car, we'll, we'll see what that brings. But again, it was a challenging race personally for me, but I think overall it was a good race because we learned a lot. And we'll come into next week with a lot more information, a lot more open-mindedness to figure out, okay, what do we want to do here? How can we improve the situation? So a very good starting off point. Finally, our Sunday race. It is Grand Valley Highway South Reverse with anything goes as far as it is a front wheel drive car with front engine layout and it is under 500 power points and it has NOS. So pretty much any tires, you know, it can be an engine swap, you can have all sorts of tuning parts, anything you can ever want and dream, as long as it is under 500 power points, it's front engine and front wheel drive car. This was definitely a unique race, because when you have 500 power points, it's not something that you can really deal a lot with. And then there's only 46 front engine, front wheel drive cars. So to have anything that you can really tune with, Really only about half the cars, if less than that, are really tunable to really get to competitive time on this course. And it was just a very unique one because I was spending all week trying all sorts of different cars out. I'm asking in the group chat, you know, who's got all what times, what kind of tunes they're doing. And everybody's being pretty silent about what they're running. And it's making me a little bit concerned that, you know, other people have figured out something that I don't. Which, to be fair, they probably have. <laughs> and it's just, I tried all sorts of cars. And even the day of, I was just sitting there going, okay, I'm going to try this one, I try that one, I tried this one. I actually spent quite a bit of time on the Daihatsu Kopen, Kopen, the 2002 model. It's only got 62 horsepower, but man, does that thing frickin' rip. It was super lightweight, and I actually wasn't getting too bad of times with it. It just, it didn't seem that you would either lose out on all the acceleration or lose out on all the top speed, and you kind of needed a little bit of both in this track and it just it wasn't cutting it it didn't have enough horsepower to really get up the hill on the backside 
So I changed around, tried a different, couple of different cars, and you know, Magnum was talking about running his uh, Honda Civic EG, the 1993 model, and said, yeah, I'm going to try that one. And immediately the difference between the Daihatsu and this was that you know, it had the horsepower, so it just felt super speedy in comparison. It was able to, you know, the acceleration was so much quicker, and it just really felt like it was on fire. And thankfully, I'm very glad that I took the time that I did to try all, all sorts of different cars and tunes, because when we finally got to the race, the first couple of laps were absolutely crazy for a lot of different reasons it's we have a grid of almost every person is running a different car it turns out that junior was actually running the same car so the three of us were running the same but every single solitary other person was running something new and different it was awesome to see how close and competitive absolutely everybody was on this really unique circuit again grand valley highway is already a pretty awesome circuit but to do the south and reverse layout means all those twisty, tight corners are going to be backwards. And then instead of coming down the main straight to then do a horseshoe and then go down a hill, you're actually having to do this really tight technical section uphill and then do a horseshoe around to the final, you know, the main straight where the pit lane is. So it's just all that being said. Having the front engine, front wheel car drivetrain set up in this course was especially interesting. It would handle the tight corner parts really well, but it was just that uphill section that with 500 power points, it just, it limited your vehicle to be basically 200 horsepower or less. And you could tell that was struggling up that hill. A lot of the times you'd be tapping out in third or fourth gear at like 100 miles an hour and you wouldn't dare shift up because then you get in such low revs you would lose your momentum and it would lose some significant time so it was really interesting all of this being thrown together all at the same time so because i was busy changing out my cars constantly i was not able to really get to know the honda civic eg 1993 model all that well it was like i was thrown into it last second i got a good tune i'm like all right we're running this and i think i had three laps of quality and then qualifying was over so i mean it was i had such a little amount of time to really test this and really to get it working to understand pretty much anything about it so because of this on top of the fact that i'm using the manual transmission so i'm actually doing you know, the clutch pedal, I'm actually doing my shifter. I am not noticing where I should be braking in a couple of spots. And it's very interesting as well, because with this course, normally it's, you've got this tunnel that spits you out onto the front straight. So you don't have a whole lot of speed coming out of the tunnel. But because we're doing this reverse, you've got all sorts of speed going into the tunnel which is incredibly difficult because the tunnel has got some elevation change it's it's got a blind couple of corners in it and with this we're getting into the beginning of lap seven i've got a couple of people looking up on the inside i'm getting i'm looking in my mirrors more than i am under my braking points i'm trying to shift down i'm shifting way too late i'm not putting enough power on the brake pedal and I outbreak myself and send myself into the wall and I collect a penalty and I'm like, oh man. But it's not over yet. I'm still feeling quite hopeful because, you know, for the first seven laps, I am having great battles with that everyone. And this is a car I just picked out of the blue. So it's it's I'm feeling a little bit skeptical, a little bit nervous, but like it seems like it's going pretty well so far. So yes, as you guys know, I will make mistakes. It's it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. So the fact that I have a spot where I'll break myself, yeah, I'm now struggling to catch up with everybody, but you know, fuel-wise I'm doing good, tires are good. It's only lap 722. We've got 
quite a bit of time before we're looking towards the end of the race. We got a lot of time to make up. I'm glad I had the optimism that I did have because at this point, I'm sitting there going, it's taken me now only two laps and I'm now back up with the pack. And it's not just a small pack of like two other racers. It's like the majority of the grid is now right here actively fighting for fourth place and I'm just with them. I'm, I've caught up to the back of them. Only two laps later, and these next couple of laps are absolutely just incredible. All Again, all these different types of cars going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Trying to keep them on the road, trying not to have too many mistakes. This course was also especially difficult from the standpoint that the penalty lines were so odd. They were so strict and specific. Like, you come out of the tunnel... And if you weren't perfectly on the racing line, it seemed like you would just get this random two-second penalty. And they were... These penalties weren't just, like, half-second penalties. They were, like, full-blown second-and-a-half, two-second penalties. It was just absolutely rough. And there were just a couple of spots, too. These cars were front-engined, front-wheel-drive cars for whichever reason, because they're smaller. They're also just traditionally narrower. And if you're in, like, the first-person camera view, normally you just expect to have all sorts of width that you can really just cut a corner and not get, like, much of an issue there. But because the car is so narrow, when you cut a corner, the majority of the car is going over that line, and you're getting that penalty. So there are just so many spots on the track where you get these just absolutely atrocious penalties, and it's like, oh, my God. So we're starting to get over the line in lap 11. I've acquired a couple of penalties of my own, and we're starting to get into the tunnel. And this is one of the weird things. When it comes to these front engine, front wheel drive cars, all the weight is in the front, and the back is just kind of being drug along for the ride. And we get to the spot where you go around the corner in the tunnel that if you just go wide enough, it takes the rear end of your car and it spins it. And a couple of us have dealt with this during this race and this is my turn to have it happen so i get grabbed i spin out i'm going in front of magnum i'm going in front of everybody and i get thrown off into the dirt once again grab some more penalties and i'm like oh my god will this just end and because it's lap, lap 11 we have to pit at some point during the race to get tires at least and I'm sitting there going, I could use a splash of fuel. So I'm back at the end of the grid. I'm, I'm struggling to try to get my car back moving again. I just, you know, solemnly drive up into the pits, get some new tires, and be on my way. And thank God for boost, because by lap 15, we're back at it. We're back in the pack. I'm fighting against Nana and Paven. And the situation that I described before with very little weight being the rear end of the car this time it was Paven's turn to deal with this this snap of oversteer where we're going into the tunnel he's going a little bit wide he is a little bit behind me he gets snagged and just perfectly pit maneuvers my car in the other direction and I am just I'm not angry with Paven because it happens but I'm just it's one of those things where it's like, can can we just stop? Like, I've had so many penalties, so many accidents, so many issues this race, and it just won't end. And again, this is on having not a great race with the endurance race, and this is not having a great race with the Tuesday race. So now it's, it's affecting my confidence, where I'm going, am I really... Do I really belong here? Or am I just in everybody's way? And am I just going to cause more problems with everybody? Am I really supposed to be here? Lap 18 arrives, and I am catching my way back up to the pack again. But this time, I'm having some very, very good close battling with Nana. And it's not just like a couple of close battles. It's going on for like multiple laps, which I was incredibly surprised about, which helped gain my confidence back a little bit, where I could just 
drive our lines and see where we were and just kind of drive around each other and not cause any issues and it was it was honestly very nice at this moment where it's like okay like i can drive my car is fine it's stable i'm trying my best to catch up to the group i don't really have much nas left over but it's it's i'm starting to get that confidence back eighth position on lap 21 of 22 is definitely where i didn't want to be but here we go this is one of the incidents that i was talking about where you just drag your car over one of the white lines a little bit too close and you get a massive massive penalty i've got four people right in front of me fighting for fourth place and i'm going okay maybe there is a chance i'm r completely out of nos and I've got Magnum up on the inside. I'm trying to hand it around the outside, but again, because of all these issues, I'm trying to play conservative. I'm just letting them have all the space in the world. And we are just trying our best to make our way up this real steep mountain with these really small engine vehicles. Magnum and Paven are having a little bit of their fights. They're leaving each other massive amounts of space. I'm starting to look up on the inside. Paven comes back, does a great block, is now trying to keep up with Magnum. I'm out just behind Paven. I'm going to give him a couple of little boosts to say, hey, let's uh, let's see if we can speed this up. Let's see if we can both get closer to the pack. And here comes the tunnel, all sorts of massive incidents earlier. So I'm breaking as early as I can. I've got this two second penalty, but then here we have Bulldog. He gets snapped and gets completely coll collides with Magnum, who collides with Paven. And all of a sudden, I'm in fifth place, and I'm going, what in the world just happened? And I'm sitting there going, I've got this two-second penalty that I've got to that I've got to serve. And I'm thinking that everybody behind me, they've got penalties too because of the collisions and hitting the walls and the track limits. And I'm suddenly thinking, okay, so at this point, I just need to stay within three seconds of Haven, and I've got fifth place. And this is, in my mind, I've got this on lock, I've got this sealed down, we're doing great. And then out of the corner of my eye, Bulldog is coming up fast. I think he must have saved a lot of his NOS, or maybe it's the boost. And I'm starting to block up on the inside, I'm like, no, 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 you can't be doing this right now. I've got fifth on lock. But here he is with a one and a half second penalty, and I'm going, okay, so how close am I? I'm not looking much at the gap. I'm sitting there going, okay, maybe I've got a chance here that I might be close enough. And we finally get down to the line. I've got Magnum coming up so close. And then fifth place. Somehow, someway, after that mess of a race, all it took was couple laps of keeping my head down getting close enough to the pack we're just on the last lap incredible drama provides me with a result in my mind i didn't deserve i didn't deserve that at all considering all that happened it really was a nice touch to the end of the week where i struggled all week with every single race to then finally come out and have a nice solid fifth place I can't wait till next week because we can finally put this behind us and just look for greener pastures. This next race, I'm super excited. We're back with Magnum's now all European series. No traction control, no ABS, no assist whatsoever. It is 1970s, 1980s European cars. And I'm going to be driving with a clutch and a shifter. I am incredibly excited for that. So again, thank you so much for watching to this point if you enjoy this content make sure to like comment and subscribe for some more recap videos coming on up again thanks so much hope you guys have a great day today take care bye